let's get into some shite. Alrighty, folks, welcome to Apocalyptic uh, from Atlanta, the hottest place in the world. Um, it's really steamy. Um, hi, how are you? I'm Rick. I am going to be talking with you for a little bit. In fact, I'm not really going to be talking to you. Uh, we have an interview today. That's right. We have an interview. I've been trying to get some interviews, more interviews on the show, and today we have one. So um, this interview is with uh, Randy Dickerson, who's an artist has some very interesting uh, ideas about art and just just general life in general. So uh, stay tuned. I think you're going to enjoy it. You know, one of the great things about living in Atlanta where I'm, I live is characters. And what I mean by that, so I am a, I was a theater person. I'm very conscious of, of character types. You see them in plays and things like that. And I always love just driving down the street and you see someone who you just think that's a character. That's a character right there. They're usually uh, dressed up in um, some kind of unusual outfit, wearing weird hats, uh, different hats, I should say. Probably shouldn't uh, judge them as weird, but just different. And I love that. That's one of my favorite things about Atlanta, just driving around. You see just have so much. It's just like different buildings, you know? Uh, people just decide, I'm going to be this person. They're, it's that persona that they are. And I love that. And uh, so I did an interview uh, with Randy Dickerson, and uh, on the way home, I passed by this guy, and he looks like an Old West prospector. You remember those guys, the long, kind of crazy beard that looks like there's some birds living in there, and uh, tattered clothes, and just, I mean, really, and he had the hat. It looks like just uh, looks like he's, he's uh, prospecting for gold, and he's riding a bike down the street. Uh, and it's great. It's fantastic. I love that. I live in um, uh, Clarkston. If you don't know anything about Clarkston, uh, Georgia, and uh, why would you? It's uh, one of the, I don't know. I think I've heard people say it's the immigration capital of the world, uh, or at least of, a, of the United States. More immigrants come through here than any other place in the country. And so I like that. And you get to see a lot of um, immigrants in their native dress which I think is great. I'm so glad that they do that instead of trying to uh, look like everyone else. I think after living here a while, they probably do. But immediately, they're uh, they're dressed up in their native, uh, whatever they're comfortable with, their native dress, their, their native, we could say costume. Costume, that's an appropriate term, right? Sure. Uh, my native dress is t-shirt and shorts. That's what I wore today uh, when I was interviewing Randy Dickerson. Randy, uh, I've known for a couple years and um, he's an interesting dude, full-time artist. And I, I wanted to have him on the show. And so I called him up. I said, do you want to do this? And he said, yeah, but I have to do it outside because my wife doesn't want me to go inside and catch COVID. And I, I certainly can't blame him for that. So we sat outside in the steaming hot. And uh, you'll hear that in the interview. You will hear um, a lot of sounds, uh, cars passing, maybe some birds, a couple of murders probably. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. So uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. And uh, let's get right on to it, shall we? This is uh, Randy Dickerson. Talking to Randy Dickerson. Randy Dickerson, artist extraordinaire. Um, and we're outside. You know, I've been podcasting for a long time. I think this is the first outside episode I've ever done in years. You're welcome. It, it, in Atlanta in July, outside. It's very mild, though. Yeah, but you said you were quarantined and you couldn't go, you didn't want to go inside, which yeah. I understand and I yeah. and I get it. I've had COVID twice. Have you had it? Have you had it? I haven't had it yet. I'm a virgin. Yeah. Um, I've had, I got some friends that's never had it that are just now getting it. Yeah. I kind of, 
I have this feeling that it's over. I walk around I like hope so. I walk around like it's over. Yeah, I shouldn't. I, I think a lot of people do. I see people with masks, and I'm like, what? What, what are they What's doing? What's wrong with them? And yeah. then, and then I remember, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But having it twice, I shouldn't. I shouldn't yeah. be like that. The first one was nothing. Second one killed me. It was yeah. bad. No, it didn't kill me. But it, it felt killed like it was the guy kill from you. Fountains of Wayne. It didn't kill me. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You shouldn't say that for people who actually I wasn't quite died from I wasn't sure you were real, but now it's good to confirm that. Yeah, you, yeah, uh, yeah. But it, but yeah, I don't know if I would say you would want it or not. No, I definitely don't want it. If you if you had the first version I had, yeah. it's not a bad. You, it's like a it's the mildest cold yeah. you can imagine. Yeah, it's yeah. just barely there. It's the only thing is well, it's like somebody tells you not to go out. So I might be I might should be scared of it. I'm not scared of it um, right now. I yeah. think uh, but we're traveling to be around uh, babies and elderly people. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So we're kind of trying to keep it, you know, make sure we do our yeah best foot forward. Uh, full disclosure, you uh, were an artist in my gallery I'm that still just an closed. I'm still an artist. You you were an artist in my gallery that right. cl just closed. Yeah. No, you didn't close. The gallery closed. <laughs> uh, and you had nothing to do with the closing. No, I, I, pretty, I probably it wasn't, did. It wasn't your fault. You know. uh, but uh, <laughs> I just want to let people know, so you were an artist, you were in the gallery, um, you're still an artist. You're in other galleries. Yeah. You're in other places. You're yeah. in other things. Yeah. And um, you well, actually, you actually, uh, uh, the place where I just went into, yep, the antique estate uh, market. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Uh, I I went in there because of you. You you suggested that. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah, I do too. I like. I visited a lot, but I never had art. Yeah. So I don't know what to think. I don't know if I'm going to sell anything. Well, it's a. You'll sell something. Yeah. It's a great vibe. Okay. Um, I think. It's just like any. It's just like a gallery. You know, there is a tone to it. Um, well, yeah, you know, everyone can bring in whatever they want for the most part. But mm -hmm. I think that people that are attracted to that place seem to have kind of a common sensibility. Yeah. Um, at least with the antique part of it, um, I've had good results in there so far. I really like it. So. So you're like me. You uh, now. There's a little age different. You're uh, uh, ten years ish. Yeah. Younger than me, yeah, not quite a generation. No, but we came from kind of the same uh, region. You're, you're, you grew up where? I grew up in L.A. L.A. Yeah, yeah, lower, lower Alabama. Okay, so you're a southern guy like me, yep. southern white guy. Yep, um, southern middle aged white guy. That's right. Uh, the, but the, I feel eighteen. Yeah, so. everybody wants to know your opinion <laughs> in this That's day right. and age, and they're trying to hire me too. So yeah, that's right. Um, how, how was that growing up? Well, let me ask you first, what, what, why did you choose art? What, how'd you get into oh, art man. as a career? A question. Uh, well, first of all, I'm a designer. I would say, yeah. I, you know, I, I, uh, grew up in a place in the South where there wasn't a lot going on. I think as an only child as well, I spent a lot of time alone. Small town, really small. Uh, how about no town? Oh. R like rural, like we're talking, you know, High school was in one town. Post office was in a different town. Do you have a light? Street light? We did have a light. <laughs> no, we didn't have a street light. We had lights. Just, just with electricity. <laughs> yeah, but no plumbing. But no, yeah, exactly. So, uh, outhouse. Um, but yeah, no, super rural. And I think spending a lot of time alone, basically, with not a lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, everybody in my family is really musical. Um, I happen to be visual. So, I just spent a lot of time drawing and in, in my own imagination, right? Um, so I ended up in college, which is a good thing, and took the path of graphic design because that was the way I would be able to pay off my loans. Yeah. Uh, and ended up going down that, that career path. So that's what I do by trade. So um, you, 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 your degree is what you're doing now. Yeah, I'm in graphic design. You're one of the few people yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I took more studio art hours than I did graphic design classes. Okay. So I had like three minors, right? So I had minors in photography, painting, and drawing. Mm -hmm. Um I only chose, you could pick two, right? And I picked, I think, painting and drawing. But long story short is my passion, my true passion is in fine art. Yeah. Um, and it took me a career in corporate to figure out that I was neglecting that. Yeah. So in the last five years or so, I've been really focused on getting back into it. Yeah. And and you, you're you still at, and this is going to sound stupid, but it, I, I can say it because... I do it too at my age. Yeah, but you, as a older guy, yeah. you're still working as an artist, and that doesn't. A lot of people don't get that. What a lot mean? of people think it's kind of a, a detour. It's just like what you mean working to be an, trying to figure it out. You mean or? no? You're just still you're still making a living. You're still working, and I, I don't know any artist unless you're a millionaire artist. Yeah, yeah. 
but I don't know any artist who's just like, I'm here at my career. I'm going to settle down. This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Yeah. It's, it's always exploring. It's always, you're always looking for that next job. I mean, I hear that from actors who um, are in the movie industry and they do a successful movie and they're like, as soon as that's over, I don't know if I'm ever going to work again. Yeah. Well, I think it's the graphic design piece, right? Like the way I make my hay is um, digital, right? Interfaces, websites, apps, like um, branding. So I've just had a great career, frankly, doing mm -hmm. that, but it, it's different than art, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it all blends together, and I feel like it's all creative. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say I'm still making a living and have always made a living at creativity. Mm -hmm. It's just that the thing that pays me is typically, quote, unquote, design. And you stayed in the South. Uh, I didn't always. I haven't always stayed in the South. I did live in Delaware for three years. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't have to move for a job, um, really. So there's always been design work here. Well, do you have that feeling where you're just like, ah, oh, you know, I'd be better if I was in New York. Yeah, I'd be when, doing better uh, if I was in, in the LA. beginning. Well, as a painter, yeah. Like yeah. when I first started out right after college, yeah, I had an itch like to go mm. to New York. I would have loved to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to necessarily live there long term, but I felt like that was the place I probably needed to be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as older, right, we're older, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like if you don't make it when you're 20 or 25 or th whatever, you know, uh, why move to New York now, right? It's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Other than for an opportunity, right. a specific opportunity. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, and, and the, the world's changed, right? Like the global market, the internet, like all these things have happened. So you don't have to be, in my mind, somewhere like that. And um, with all the things that even are unsavory about the South, I still love the South. Right. Yeah. I grew up here. So there's something about it, especially the nature aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just the oddities, you know? Uh, there's just things about it that are interesting to me and quirky and the heat. I just like it. Yeah, the heat. <laughs> that's yeah, even the heat. That's where I get lost. I know it loses a lot of people, but I tell my my kids right. Like I grew up playing basketball on blacktop, mm -hmm. you know, out out in the summer heat, hundred degrees. I my first job was doing concrete, like pouring concrete at fourteen years old. Jeez. So um, I don't know. I kind of got a taste for it. Uh huh. Um, I hate the cold. Really? I cannot stand the cold. Wow, that's my domain. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. Most people are like that. I think yeah. I can't can't stand it. Uh, how is uh, how is living in this area reflected in your art? I mean, how's it? Uh, how does it influence your art? I should um, say, or does it even? Yeah, I think there's something magical about this place. I think, especially in the woods, like just wandering around, like looking at nature, um, daydreaming. I don't know. There's something about it that seeps in um, more and more these days. I see a lot of symbols that are showing up in my work. First of all, I, I should say there's probably, and you may maybe be able to speak to this, but I probably have like two or three different distinct approaches to art. Mm -hmm. right? Like I don't always just paint the same type of thing. Right, right. Sometimes I paint abstract. Sometimes I paint realistic. Sometimes I do storytelling. Sometimes it's a blend of all those things. And so in one of those veins, I'm starting to see imagery from my childhood, right? Like fishing trips and weird knickknacks, things that, I don't know, I grew up around. Uh, labels, logos, weird stuff just kind of showing up and seeping into my work. Um, and I don't question it too much, to be honest with you. I just kind of let it show up and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that's one of the things I've noticed. And, I, and it's what I've noticed about your art. Where you're talking about putting the knickknacks. You don't do that on all of your art, no. but you have some pieces like that that I would describe somewhat. I wouldn't call the, the entire piece that, but it incorporates nostalgia. For sure. And I, I find... I think it's just a result of getting older. Sure. But as you get older and just l there are little pieces of the South. I grew up in Knoxville and just, I don't know, little things I did with my grandparents, just going downtown Knoxville, taking a back road and just seeing something um, that just reminds me of when I was a kid that doesn't exist anymore. Right. And just to realize, oh, I was there when that little thing right. happened. And it's almost like you're bringing it back. We were talking about one of your... Uh, pieces that look like it had Cracker Jack toys. It does, yeah. And, and you can't find those toys no. anymore. No one has and, Cracker And Jack. frankly, at my age, you forget those things. Yeah. And it's like somehow it randomly rattles around and falls out, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that thing. And it's kind of like music. I think it's like it can take you back. Like a visual for me can take me back just like hearing a song can take me back. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I remember just – I don't know if it's a better time. I wouldn't say that, but just a different time. A right? different, yeah. yeah. A simpler There's time no or something – and it's not about the necessarily 
the era or even my surroundings, but about me where I was at that time when mm -hmm. I was 12 years old, yeah. right? Or in my, my mind. So, and I don't think these works that I'm doing, to be honest, these days are really complete. They're just more of an evolution of where I am. So I'm not sure if anybody else is interested in this stuff, right? Yeah. I just do it because it's coming out of me. Does that make sense? And so we'll see where it goes. Well, when you're, when you're working like for, I don't know, do you work for an artist? I mean, for an audience? Um, are you conscious of the audience or the people who are going to look at your yeah, work when you're... I think it's hard not to be. Yeah. I think it depends, but I think it depends on what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So there are certain pieces where they're 100% personal pieces, and I try to buffer myself from worrying about, will anybody like this or buy this, or what would they think about it? Like, I just want to make this because I want to make it. Yeah. If it turns out great and somebody wants it, whatever, uh, that's awesome. Or if someone's attracted to it, even better. There's other times where I focus on a subject matter, like I'm doing a lot of fossil paintings right now where I'm painting these shark's teeth. And although I am hyper-focused on those objects and I want to do as good of a job at painting that as I can for myself, in the back of my mind, I can't help think, man, this would look really good in a coastal museum or a, yeah. or a gallery. And so, you know, yeah, I do think about color palettes. I do think about arrangements. I do try to make it pleasing so that maybe someone else who's interested in the same stuff as me might want to buy it. Yeah. You know, how would look, this look over someone's couch? Um, but I try not to too much, especially at this stage, because I still feel like I'm exploring and trying to find my own way. And I don't want that to be dictated by what someone might buy uh, too much, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was thinking yesterday about, um, I don't know why this, I was thinking about how I approach art. And I was just thinking about the idea of finishing the piece. So I have this thing, it's just my own personality. I, I don't like finishing things. Okay. I don't like completing things. You don't, you don't want it to end. I don't. So when I start anything as part of being an artist, uh, there's, there's an inf uh, there's amount of infinity involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look at a blank page, a lot of people get upset, uh, get really nervous, right. anxious about it. And, because, and it's because of that infinity. Right. But, but I love that. Right. It's like whatever I throw in there. You're enjoying the process, though. Yeah, yeah. You're like really loving the process. So whatever I throw in there is going to work. But then when I end it, I close it, and it's no longer infinite. Right. And and then that it can feels be, sad, right? It Does can be judged, sad? right? For sure, because it's closed. It's it's a thing. It's a now. thing exists, right? As long as I don't <laughs> stop it, this is right. so stupid. But as it's long as I don't, stupid. as it's long as stupid. I don't stop it, it's always infinite. And so yeah. I was thinking about that yesterday, and I was just thinking about the the idea of approaching an art piece with knowing that it's going to be finished. And I just like, why does it have to ever be finished? Yeah. And why did why does why can't you just like put a few things on a piece of paper or canvas and then just say that's art. It doesn't have to have all the elements. Right. That's it fascinating. To, it doesn't have to include everything that you know about art. Yeah. It's just a moment at that point because life is never finished. So why should your art be finished? So that's a fascinating thing because I have a hang up on quality or good enough, quote unquote, good enough. So when I look at a piece of art, I've never thought what you just said. I've never actually thought that way. And I think that's fascinating it's a fascinating perspective, right? Because when I start a piece, I'm at a place where finish to me is, is it what I could consider a good piece of art? Right. Or would someone like it? Or do I like it? Right. And it's tying into that whole marketability audience, thinking about that. You know, I do start to judge it at the end. Like, mm -hmm. is it good enough? And typically speaking, what I end up doing is I consider, I go too far. Like, I feel like I go past the finish line where I should have stopped and called it done yeah. and move on from it. Even if it's as good as it could be or not, just say good enough, move on to the next one. So I typically go past that point and overwork it Yeah, and then end up, I don't know if ruining it is the right word, but no, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I but I, in your world, it doesn't matter. No, I feel <laughs> right? like, but it used to, I feel like I, I there was some point in my art um, career, uh, my art <laughs> practice where it's kind of a screw you to myself. It's just like, I want to say, no, it shouldn't be like that. And so I, 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 it's almost like I'm going against what I want to do. There's a little rebellious nature in there. Yeah. I'm like kicking my own ass. Yeah. And, and, but there's something cool about that. It's just yeah. like, I, I can't use this. And I'm like, well, then I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's almost it's like just it's defying your yeah, own yeah. self. Yeah, Well, that's an artistic nature anyway. But though, who right? am I to say it's finished? And because I shouldn't say that it's finished, right? Then don't listen to me. Right, right. Just do it until well, it just stops. Look, I think there's something I I agree in in the in the aspect of 
we all look at it differently. We all see things differently. Like you've told me the same thing. Like people see our artwork different than we see ourselves. Yeah. And who's to who's to say it's done or not done or you know what I mean? Like it's just it's there. I, I did it, and this is where it is. It's mm-hmm. like a status snapshot. Yeah. You know, was it Duchamp or somebody who dropped a somebody dropped a painting? It was like this piece of art that was made, and it was like being moved into a museum, and it got dropped and broken. Yeah. And the artist, I think it was Duchamp, said. Well, now it's done. That sounds like... That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That's like a, a Banksy or a Duchamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like... It, but that open-mindedness and that flexibility of, right. well, is it finished? I don't know. Maybe. Well, I was reading about poetry and, and one of, a poet I read that was like, never say that your po- poems are done. Right. But I mean, if they're published, how do you go back and fix <laughs> well, you just them? Well, write, just write on top. But right. I'm just like, if, if, if a piece is in a museum, let's just say right. uh, Picasso is still alive. Right, right. Could he come in and finish right. that piece that's hanging? Well, it's his. Why can't he? More interestingly, <laughs> might be if someone adds to it. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, throw some soup on it. Yeah, I might want to throw some milk or soup for eggs or on it. <laughs> but I know? just, I feel like that, um, you know, just like poetry, it's just like, oh wait, I should have put this here. Do, does an artist have a right? Is it, when does it close? Well, so I guess some just because somebody bought it. So here's the thing, Rick. I I almost feel like everything I create, I could recreate. Really. Well, to some degree, it won't be the same, mm-hmm. but it'll be the next evolution of that thing. Okay. So, like, when I finish a painting, quote unquote, finish a painting, it's like an installment in an evolution of a thing. So, like, if I do a painting of a trinket and I add an abstract background, um, I almost always am looking at my own limitations and going, well, if I did this again, I probably would improve it here. Right? Yeah. And so, when I let that go out into the world, whether it gets bought or thrown out in my mind it doesn't matter because i'm going to do another one and i'm going to level it up next time right so it's like there might be 10 paintings of the same subject that just evolve over time and i see them almost as a i guess that's what a body of work might be but i see it as almost a continuation of the same thing but you're saying what i said a few uh topics ago about unfinishing see i think what you I think what finishes an art piece is like four pieces down right. the road. Right. It's not that exact thing that you that, just stop. You can stop right. and then you somebody's going to look down there and go, "Oh, yeah. wait, I see how it ties in." And it yeah, kind yeah. of it completes it all connect, connects. You have to look at your entire uh catalog right. before people know when right. something begins and when something ends. Right. If if and who's going to do that? Right. <laughs> it's just interesting how people like I think it's there's so many levels to how people view what we do and how we do it. Yeah. I had a friend, I painted over some paintings. Uh, I do that a lot where you, you probably do the same, sure, right? You just yeah. have stuff in your studio where you just, it's, whatever, it's not working for you. Right. You told me not to. Remember when well, I was like, I'm going to paint right, over because, <laughs> right. Because when I see it, I see it differently. Yeah, and yeah. I saw, I had somebody look at my stuff and they're like, why would you ever paint over that thing? And yeah. I'm like, that's like me saying, why would you ever sing the same song twice? Right. right? You, that was just a version of it. Yeah. And it wasn't quite where it needed to be. And so I'm continue to evolve it and work on top it's like it's not ready yet it right. doesn't need to go out into the world yeah um i've had people that, uh offer to buy art that's not finished mm-hmm. i'm like why would i sell that and they're like i want that just like that well you know but see, no. sometimes doesn't it change your perception of it and the value of it even to yourself if someone else sees it a different way i tend to think they don't know what they're talking <laughs> about i'm like this person doesn't know art Right. And I mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah. I don't know. There's that. There's that point of like, do I do I play into this and let them uh, buy it? Because when I years ago, when I was in my twenties and I was like working up in Gallenberg, airbrushing T-shirts, and I had this little rag that I would clean my airbrush off with, yeah. and it was just like sometimes color, that's the best work. Total, just yeah. lots of paints, yeah, uh, swatches all over it. And four or five times a day, someone would offer to Can buy Can I buy it. that? Yeah. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. And I felt insulted. You should have signed like, it. Why don't you buy what's <laughs> hanging on the wall that I'm trying to sell? Yeah, but see, okay, but that's the thing, it's right? It's like going to a clothing no, store and listen. asking if you could buy the person's underwear. Or the trimmings. I get it. So, but here's the thing. Sometimes when we're cleaning our brushes or just nonchalantly goofing around, yeah. those artifacts, because they come from a very non-intuitive place... I mean, what is abstract painting and non-objective painting other than just like random marks, yeah. right? So people see that and it, it says something to them. It moves yeah. them in some way. And that's okay. It's valid. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I mean, that that's all we're doing is moving color around on a surface. Right. You should just take credit for it. And Sign s- the rag and sell that sucker. And just like, that makes me happy. Yeah. And it's like, okay, right. here, take it. I, I, it gives me an emotional, <laughs> there's a 
yeah, reaction there. Yeah, I still want to say go to art school <laughs> or just take a class. Well, I think Watch it depends on your intentions, right? You didn't intend to make that. No. That's the difference, right? If you would have actually tried to make those marks and accidentally made those shapes on a canvas, you could take credit for it. Yeah. But that was just an accident. Right. It was, right? But, but it goes back to the whole thing, me being an abstract artist. Right. My kid can do that. Sure. And it's just like, well, then you're just saying – a complete accident of me wiping my right. brushes off right, right. is an abstract art. And, I, and there's a part of me that wants well, to resist that and go, Rick, no. So here's the thing, Rick. The things that we do and the process of how we do it is so foreign to most people that people that don't draw or paint. Yeah. And, I, and that's something I hate, by the way, is when people say, I, don't, I can't paint. I hate being called an artist, frankly. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're all artists. We're born yeah, artists. Sure. Yeah, like it's whatever. Creators. Yeah, we, we make stuff. And we should all be making stuff. But like, if you go to a certain point in your life and you haven't done that, it becomes completely foreign to you. Yeah. Just like music or anything else, it's just all Greek to us. Mm -hmm. So, someone goes in your studio, they don't know the difference in what you made on purpose and what you did. They just see something that is cool, right? Because it's just new and mm -hmm. uh, there's a what's the right word? Novelty to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, something I I discovered uh, when I had the gallery was, and at first it sounds like a joke, but it's just like, um, especially like found objects. Yeah. Or just the way a, a paint that has been applied to a building as a, as a sign like or drips something off or has whatever. started coming yeah, off yeah, over yeah. time. Yeah. There's an, there's an art to that. 100%. And it's, people will pay you to come into their apartment. And fake and, it. And make a sign 100%. that looks like it's faded yeah. after 100 years. Yeah, that's right. It's but there's aesthetic. something about that that's art. And when I first discovered that and I would incorporate it into things and I would just be like, I can't do this. And people are going to buy it and think I did this on no, purpose. No, they love it. They love but it. it's just like who cares? It's what makes people it's just feel like the good. Shirt. It's just like the shirt you're wearing right yeah. now. It's a distressed look and it's a vibe. Someone discovered that people like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's it's, it's not hilarious. Real. We live in a fake world. I brought my son into Target and they saw hole jeans with holes in them. Yeah, new. Yeah, and he started cracking up. He's like four years old. He's like dying laughing. He's like, look, there's some crappy mm -hmm. jeans that have holes in them. Of course, he wasn't old enough to get it. Yeah, but you know what I mean. That kind of puts it in perspective. It's well, like. What you about, uh, what are we doing with uh, artists like, um, I'm, I know this is an older uh, uh, reference, but Warhol was kind of that. He kind of made fun of the whole artist mentality. Just well, like, the whole art market's a whole different thing. Yeah. Right? I think that's a, that's a whole warped space when you get up to a certain level, or not even level, but like s the world of art at that level I think it's a different reality than most of us. Does that but, make sense? Yeah, but I don't know. I've seen artists. I mean, all artists, when you get to a certain level, use assistance. That's not what I mean. I and mean, like Richter, I've seen him, and yeah, he, you know, and yeah, he'll yeah. just say, "Here, you finish that." Yeah. And someone's going to buy that piece, thinking that Gerhard Richter did the whole thing, but it's really one of his assistants did it. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's a different game. So, like, when you get into the auction world mm -hmm. or the two percent or the one percent, where you're selling for there's a status symbol. Like, you, you sell art because someone famous bought your art, and now someone else wants to buy a piece. And there's, like, a competition that happens just to own something. It doesn't matter if it's good or not, right? So I think there's a whole warped reality that happens at a certain level in the art market that is different than what you and I are. We're not swimming in that same water. No. So whatever Warhol was I'd thinking, like 100%. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? It's like, I just think it's a different game. Okay. And I think when, what Warhol was doing and thinking, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. Who knows what he was, how his mind was even working, right? Because I just think it's a different thing, right? Just, I, I can't, it's like the black hole. It's like you look at physics and you're like, okay, uh, planets work this way and gravity works that way. But then when you get to a black hole, all those rules are gone. Yeah. And I think that's a similar thing with the way we do art and the markets that we work with versus those levels of uh, the art market. Are we out of an era where art can change the world? Uh, yeah, I think the world is so different now. I don't know. Right. So, and I don't want, I don't want yeah. this to sound like old no, man uh, back in the old days kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. But what I grew up in a time when art was used to uh, protest, to kind of yeah. move uh, thoughts forward, yeah. uh, to, pr uh, to uh, um, um, what's the word, satirize sure. certain things. And, uh, you know, you could actually you buy books and books of political posters yeah. of artwork from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. I was too young to really understand what was going on. Right. But it was a big part in, in art as far as like visual art, fine art, music, 
everything was kind of used at times as a protest. And I feel like now we live in a time where there's a lot to protest, a whole lot to sure. protest. And I never see art being used as a tool of, of protest anymore. And I'm just yeah. like, is it too late? Can yeah. I think art, are, are we not the world now? Yeah, I think it's. I think there's too much noise. There's too much chatter, and I do think. I think. I, I think it's too late. For me personally, what I try to do is, I try to make art that can change one person. Okay. And it may not even be in a political way or in a societal commentary way, but it might be much more in a connect with someone and make them inspired or give them something beautiful to look at or make them happy in some way. Like I just try to focus on doing things that make me happy and might might connect with some other individual because mm. i think it is too late on a, for me it's personally on a global scale yeah i just think the world's too different right now and like even music right it's just there's too much how do we even like how do we even know what to focus on there's so many shows right. so many movies so much music so much art so much so much information so much change but people are, are more interested in selling and and buying than they are in making change and that's what i feel like is the difference well, and i don't know that it, yeah i i can't convince myself that it's too late yeah more than i can just say no one's doing it yeah. when you think about and and this is not going back too far but right. if you take if you think about a sketch comedy group like monty python right that was funny right, but right. they were also they were making yeah, uh, social, social commentary yeah. yeah nobody who's doing no. i mean there might be some small well groups that are doing it but yeah. no one's trying to make change anymore i think i think <laughs> when i was younger i probably did want to yeah at my age it's probably not what i'm interested in anymore and it may be that doesn't mean it's something i'm not saying you should or shouldn't do that i just think that's probably it, it's probably gonna have to come from the youth right well, you got like shepherd fairy who's making protest posters and you never see them anywhere except on his website where you can buy a bunch of them. right and it's like buy this to put in your house right. but when he was younger he, he probably wasn't doing it for the money when he was you know no i know that's what i'm age, saying right? that's a long time yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like where are the people doing it now yeah. why aren't kids well I think picking you, that up I think and doing you, it i think you have to be motivated i think everyone's internally motivated right and it's like i can't speak to them because it's a t completely gen different generation yeah. but i think that's where it would have to come from right well i'm trying to speak to them I know I'm, I'm all the kids that listen to my podcast <laughs> get out there and <laughs> make a statement do something well, so here's the thing rick i kind of evolved personally from a place where i used to think everything i did had to have a an angle right it had to communicate something even if it was just something clever not even something political right it's just something where you look at it and it give you gave you a thought and i've kind of evolved past that to a different place where i i kind of want it to be much more about a feeling and much more open-ended that's just me personally right like i just like to at this point create things that might move someone but Maybe it means something different to you than it means some, you know, to me, yeah. right? So I think we all just have to deal with that on an individual basis. Um, but I do agree with you. I just don't think there's a lot of people out there trying to do – maybe we just haven't been exposed to it, right? Maybe it's out there. We just don't see it. I think that's – there's a, like you said, there's a lot of noise. So I think that that's true. There has to be groups. There are, there's definitely people doing political stuff. It gets covered up by the commercial stuff. But I just feel like there, there should be more – of that out you should see more of yeah. it i don't know well like the cartoonist what was uh lukovich yeah lukovich yeah, yeah lukovich yeah um i mean he's still doing his stuff right yeah yeah so i mean but editorial cartoons are being faded out of papers and stuff well there you now. go They're, nobody wants it's like the controversy it's like if you do if you like in the in the 60s and 70s you could do a poster of nixon put it up and and be glorified if you do one thing about trump they'll burn your house down and <laughs> right. nobody wants that and so whatever, and I'm just using that as an example, yeah. whatever. Um, and, and there's a lot of political things that need to be not just satire, uh, satirized, but, but brought forward. And if you're talking about issues of, of the um, uh, LGBTQ community, yeah. um, gender, whatever, Southern poverty, what, let's, I mean, those things should be thrown out into the public. Just the corruption in our government. Yeah. It, you don't have to take a controversy. You can. Yeah. I hope you, some people will. Yeah. It should be. And every once in a while, I'll hear a musician doing it. Yeah. It's just not, you know, they don't, they don't want, they don't, they don't want to divide their audience. Well, I think it's also just that there's so much to choose from, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, unless it's something that speaks to you really, really strongly personally, yeah, I mean, like, what subject are you want to paint? Because we can sit here and name the 50 million things that, you know, we want different, right? Um, so I think it just depends on the person, right? Like, and, yeah, to some degree, everybody's focused on selling. You know, there's that piece, too, especially at our age, right? Like, yeah. we're at a point where, and I think, I think it just goes with time. Like, 
I might evolve to a point where I want to make a political statement, right? And I definitely keep that in my arsenal as a thing I can do. Um, but I think there's a part of me that's like, will it make a difference? You know? And I think a lot of people probably think that way just because it's hard. I mean, there's just, it's hard to, it's hard to get noticed right now. Anything. I mean, but that in itself could help you get noticed. It could. It could. But it's like. Get your house burned down, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you a question. I don't want to kind of end on this topic. I mean, we could talk about this for days. I know. We're just barely starting no, this conversation. I, know. I, do, I don't want to bore everybody. Maybe we'll do a part two. But um, all right. So this is kind of a two-part question. Um, mostly. Um, well, first of all, I was just kind of like, what? where's art going? What, what's the state of art? Where is it going? And then, and then the second part is. And this is the hard part. Where's the place for you? I think the second part's the easier part. Really? Yeah, because the first part I don't really know. Okay. Uh, I think I almost feel like I'm resurrecting my career in art, frankly. I think I've always felt like I took a path that uh, it felt like a, re a regret for the longest time. Um, now I'm kind of changing my opinion on that. And I think it's less about, oh, look at all the years I wasted doing, you know, straight up design work and not painting and focusing on painting and art. And now it's more of a, well, this is the path that I had to take to get to where I am. And it's informing what I'm doing from now on. Um, where, it is, where it is for me is really, as much as it may seem weird, I treat it like I'm a beginner. So almost every painting I make, um, I'm focused on very, very, very much on, am I getting better? Am I enjoying what I'm doing? And I'm pa am I painting and focused on the things that I, I like? Um, and I'm not trying to predict where it's going to go. It's yeah. really more about let me just show up day to day, do my best, and let it unfold. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question or not. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, it does. I, but I, I'm kind of interested. Um, I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like art is going to get more and more. I, it's all about selling now. It's all about making lots yeah, and lots of money. You know, there was a time when, as an artist, your your life was... Uh, not secure. You didn't sell. You were the poor person in the in the I neighborhood, still, and sometimes am. you supported no. yourself by doing another job. Yeah. But everybody wants, you know, you want to make a living, so you you have to please the people, Maybe. please your audience, yeah. and you end up making stuff that's just not. Yeah, really but that's what I'm saying. That, that's exactly why I answered the question the way I did. I'm not focused on that. Yeah. I'm focused on me. Right. Like all that other stuff will have to work itself out. Yeah. Like I still make a good living doing design. I still have a great job. Commercial art. Commercially, and right. there's no problem with that. And there's no problem with that. And that gets me by. But if I want to one day end up making a living doing great art uh -huh. and having it be just the things I create and people are attracted to that and they buy it, I have to hone my craft and level it up to the point where it's undeniably good. And I'm not there yet. So or at least I don't feel that way. Or at least I haven't connected with the right audience. Yeah. So for me, it's about focusing on what I can control, which is what I produce and how I approach the work. Yeah. So I'm not focused on all that other stuff. I'm just looking at, you know, um, am I getting better? Am I enjoying what I'm doing? Am I still learning from this? Am I still growing? Um, do I like it? You know, and if I don't feel like I'm hitting that, then I take a step back, do a reset, take a deep breath and say, okay, well, what can I do differently? And it might be as simple as, you know what, I'm going to go paint, paint air for a year. I'm just going to do something completely different because I know I always want to be creating. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I guess it's more about turning the focus on myself and looking inward and looking at my own processes versus trying to figure out where do I fit into the big picture of things. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you can ask me that no, question no, again later. No one knows. Give you a different answer. Uh, well, it's good, uh, you know, good to hear what you're doing. Right now, the only place I fit in is the Decatur Estate Vintage Market. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> I was there. I, I love it. I love it. To me, it's a gallery. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's awesome. You know what? And you got to start where you start, right? Um, I feel like a real, like I felt a strong connection with you yeah. at the gallery. I feel yeah. a strong connection with uh, Maggie over at the- It is a gallery, the, though. It, no, it is. It, it totally it, 100%. is. 100%. It's, yeah. it's much more of a gallery than it is a-, a, a I, I was walking around town uh, a couple days ago, and I saw two retail stores that had really good artists who used to be in the rec gallery that oh, really? were in the retail store. Really? It's no different what we're doing. Right. You just want people to buy your work. Uh, it's wall space. Yeah. It's the, what was the Salon de Refuse? Do you remember that? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I said it right. There's a whole thing about like all these artists that were rejected from the main galleries in France yeah. and Paris, and so they did their own show, and it was like this the salon, the gallery of the refuse. Yeah, that's what the red gallery was. And then right, <laughs> yeah, but it's 
now the art that was in that is what we remember right. because it was awesome art. It just didn't have a place at the time. So yeah. they made their own, right? And I feel like it's the same thing. We're making our own way. We're finding out where we fit in. Like, I'm going to try all kinds of weird stuff, and I'm going to put it in there if Maggie's cool with it. Yeah. And you know what I mean? It's like... And you can do that in the gallery. That's right. what's fun. Right, right, right. You have freedom, and totally. that's all about freedom, so... All right, man. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. I know you do a lot of social media stuff. Yeah, I think uh the best place you can find me right now is on youtube i'd love yeah. for you to go check out my youtube channel it's rld studio you can google it easy, i watch easy your enough. stuff all the time thank you man mm -hmm. i need to do more i you know yeah. it's one of those things where i do about one once a month well um, the good thing about your stuff is you're very cl clear you have a good voice and you're really good at explaining what you're doing and the, it's five, the five people that have watched my videos have said the same uh, there's so more than that i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's where i'm trying to get people to go because i think there's a real community there i'm building up a really good connection with a few folks and, okay uh, you can also find me on Instagram, RLD underscore studio. Um, and I have a website. I and Threads. You just got on Threads. I did. So, you know, I'm just like trying threads. it out. It's it's a nice, so far, I yeah. like it. I, they're just, they're working on it, but they'll blow, they'll ruin it. They got to ruin it. I, I like point. the tone and the folks there so far that I've connected with. It feels yeah. like a really engaged community. So, yeah, I like it so far. Well, I have cool listeners. I'm sure they'll come and check you out and uh, you'll get a fan or two. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing this. Thanks for doing this out in the hot sun. Yeah, sorry. My All fault. Right. All right. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. See you, man. All right. There you go. How was that? That was a pretty cool interview, wasn't it? Randy's fun to talk to. Uh, talk to him a lot about a lot of different things and um i hope you enjoyed that interview let me know what you think of the interview i'm going to try to get more interviews on i think thursday's a good time for interview shows don't you uh let's do that uh our listener line 678-348-0008 that's there for you call in uh, your opinion counts just tell me what you think about anything the show i don't care it doesn't even have to do with the show just tell me what you think of art tell me what you think of coffee tell me what you think of being outside in a billion degrees temperature that's fine too uh, you could text that same number if you're shy you don't want to talk i will read what you wrote on the podcast but it's a good way for you to be uh, to be included into the podcast if you would like. You can also send me an email, rick at apocalyptic.com. I, I kind of look for that 24 hours a day, always checking. Uh, speaking of that, I'm always on uh, threads. Join threads, that's fun. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, Instagram. All of the things that are owned by the same person. It's a monopoly. Uh, okay, that's what we're going to do. That's all. I'm going to call it... Uh, I'm all sweaty from being outside. Uh, I want to thank Randy for um, doing the interview. Uh, look up his stuff. Check out his videos. Uh, he's a cool dude. All right. We will see you on Monday, everybody. Oh, man. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, but it'll just be me. I'm pretty sure. I can interview myself. I'm pretty good at doing things by myself.